In this section, we will be installing Ubuntu Server as a virtual machine in Windows 10. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to download a copy of the installation file. And for that, we're going to open the browser. And uh, we are going to go over to ubuntu.com forward slash download forward slash server and click on download. Once the download is complete, let's go back into the desktop and let's open VirtualBox. So next, I want to click on Machine and click New. I'm going to name my virtual machine Ubuntu Server 1. And uh, for the type of operating system, uh, it's going to be Linux. And for the version, it's going to be Ubuntu 64-bit. I'm going to click Next. For the amount of physical memory, I'm going to also leave it as uh, 1 gig. That's 1,024 megs. Click Next. For the hard disk, uh, I'm going to create a new uh, virtual hard disk. So I'm going to create it now. I'm going to click Create. Uh, I'm going to select VDI as the type of uh, virtual hard drive, which is a virtual box uh, type of hard drive. And I'm going to click Next. I want to make it dynamically allocated so it doesn't um, it doesn't occupy the full size of the hard drive at once, so it basically increases the, hard, the size of the hard drive as it needs more space. So I'm going to click Next. For the size of the hard drive, I'm going to make it 40 gigabytes, and I'm going to click Next. And um, we have set up all the basic configuration for our uh, Ubuntu server virtual machine. So now what I want to do, I want to make sure I select the virtual machine that I just created and then I want to go here into settings and then click on storage and then click on empty this uh, icon that is underneath the controller IDE and then I'm going to click on this drop down menu here and I'm going to choose the second one it says choose a disk file and then I'm going to browse to where my Ubuntu server ISO image is, the one that I just downloaded. I'm going to select and click open. And make sure to click on Live CD DVD so we can boot off the image. And finally, click OK. So now I'm going to click on Start. And this is going to boot up the virtual machine. All right. so. The installation started. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to click here on View, and then I'm going to head over to Brit, uh, Virtual Screen number one, and I'm going to select 125%, so I can zoom in into the VirtualBox and have a better view of the uh, operating system. So the first screen that we see uh, during the installation is to select the uh, the language. So I'm going to accept the defaults, and I'm going to press Enter. In the next screen, we need to select if we want to continue with updates or we want to continue without updates. I'm going to select the default, which is the second one, continue without updates, and I'm going to click Enter. The next screen, um, we need to select the keyboard layout, so I'm going to leave as default US English, and I'm going to press Enter. In the next screen, uh, notice that we have the Ethernet uh, network interface configuration, which is ENP 0S3, and the IP address is 10.0.2.15. Yours might be a little bit uh, different depending on the type of network you selected. If you go to Machine and then you go to Settings, and then you click on Network, notice that by default, my machine is placed in NAT network. If you live in NAT, you should be able to have internet access. So for now, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to accept the defaults and I'm going to press Enter. In the next screen, we need to enter a web proxy. Now, we are not using any web proxy, so I'm going to leave it empty and I'm going to press Enter. The next screen, uh, we need to enter um, an, an alternative mirror for our Ubuntu installation. 
and I'm going to also leave it as a default and I'm going to go ahead and press enter again. In the next section, uh, we are going to um, partition and format the hard drive. So here we have the option to use the entire disk, which is what we want to do. We want to use the entire disk in order to install the Ubuntu server. And we also have the option to uh, select whether we want to set our, our disk as LVM with logical volumes. I'm going to leave as a default, we're not going to set up a logical volume. So I'm going to press tab until I reach to the end and I'm going to press enter. So in the next screen, we can review our current uh, storage configuration. So notice that we are using the uh, entire disk, 39 gigabytes, and the file system is extension 4. Also, uh, if we look at here at the, at the, towards the bottom of the, of the screen, we have two different partitions. On the first partition, it's only one megabyte, and that's where our group bootloader is going to be installed. And then we have the root partition, which is 39.9 gigabytes, and that's where the installation of Ubuntu is going to be. All right, so I'm going to press Enter. The next screen is asking me for confirmation if I want to continue and make those changes permanent. So I'm going to press the down arrow key and I'm going to press enter. All right, so here in this section, we need to enter our user credentials. So I'm going to give my username a name of John Smith, but you can give yours uh, whatever name you want. Make sure you remember the username and password. And I'm going to press tab. In the next, uh, in the next box, I'm going to enter the name of my server. I'm going to name mine, you want to, well actually I'm going to name my server. I'm going to press tab and that's going to take me to the next box. Here I'm going to name my username, which is going to be jsmith. I'm going to press tab and I'm going to choose a password. So make sure you remember whatever password you choose and go ahead and enter it in the last box. Press tab and press enter. The next screen uh, is asking me whether or not I want to install OpenSSH Server. OpenSSH Server is a remote terminal that we can use to remotely manage our, our, our server. So I'm going to press the space bar to make that selection. And then I'm going to hit tab twice until I reach the bottom and press enter. On the last screen, we need to select all the extra packages that we want to uh, installed during the installation of Ubuntu server. For now, I'm not going to select any extra packages, so I'm going to press tab and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to let the installation finish. All right, so once the installation is complete, then we have the option to cancel, update and reboot. So I'm going to select that option at the bottom and I'm going to press enter. Now it's in the process of canceling and then we will be rebooting the operating system. Okay, at this point, we need to remove the installation media. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Machine, Settings, and then Storage. And then I'm going to click on the Installation Media Optical Drive. Click on the drop down menu and remove disk. Also, uncheck Live CD DVD and click OK. And finally, press Enter. And at this point, the system is rebooting. All right, so we have arrived at the login prompt. So I'm going to enter my username, press enter, and I'm going to enter my password. 